You're listening to episode 301 of the Major Issues Podcast, and on this episode, we do our very best to try to dissect all the news to come out of New York City Comic Con. The Major Issues Podcast starts right now! Hello everybody out there in comic book land, my name is George Serrano, aka The Don, and if you're listening to this, you can only be here for one reason, and that's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast, brought to you each and every week by ComicBookClick.com, new era, new season, episode 301, and you know, I'm never alone, sir, if you could please introduce yourself. As I, Alex Garcia, aka Be Roke, but not broken. <laughs> Hey, I dig it. I dig it. Be rogue. How you been? How's everything? Everything's going great. I mean, we're just coming out of New York City Comic Con, and we've got a ton of news. It's there's just a mountain of stuff coming up. The event itself was amazing. I'm seeing so many great pictures and and fans just going crazy. I still feel like we're in this post covid world so just seeing people be able to gather and especially geek out it's not just celebrating you know being able to eat a bowl of pasta with someone else again for the <laughs> right, first time right, in right. a couple of years actually immersing themselves in what makes them tick and just expressing themselves with these this uh, the phenomenal cosplay and just people excited to hear all this new news especially considering what you've been covering a lot which is uh, talking a lot of fatigue so the new york city yes. comic-con kind of reinvigorates you and get you get, start hearing all this news and trailers and ideas so here we go hopefully this is ramping us up for the christmas season and for 2024 yeah I, one of the things that i found interesting was i found a bunch of people on my socials going to the con who have never been before and going decked out a lot of people are taking a chance uh, diving in uh, head first to their fandoms and it's so cool to see like on a Sunday morning, someone you don't regularly expect to be in full cosplay going, I'm going to comic, my first Comic-Con. You know, I think everyone should, if you're listening to this and you haven't already, I think uh, if you have any interest in it, in all things nerdum, geek geekdom, the stuff that we love, um, treat yourself to a con. Because I find, especially comic book reading, a very personal experience. You you are by yourself for the most part. You're reading it to yourself. The voices are in your head, um, and not the usual voices that tell you to do bad things. But you're what you're reading these stories, and it's what they mean to you. It's at your own pace. It's at your own um, the mood that you take all this stuff in. So whenever you're able to get with like-minded people and talk about your experiences, your loves, your likes, your dislikes, um, it's always a fun time, and it. You talk about one of the most inclusive um, subsets of fandom, Comic-Con goers or convention goers are some of the nicest people I've ever met. You know, uh, there's literally people who pride themselves on walking around the con floor repairing other people's cosplays. You know, like walking around with, hey, you need duct tape? Hey, you need <laughs> you need a solder to this? You need this? That. Like, it's, it's such an inviting community. Um, and you can go and you can walk the panel floor in, in cosplay. You can walk the panel floor in regular plain clothes and enjoy the cosplays you see around them. Um, but usually when it comes to these conventions, they talk about the announcements, the trailers, you know, the big things moving forward. So that's what we're hoping to encapsulate here. Some hot news and even hotter takes on some of this stuff that's been coming out. Um, and yeah, people have been talking about fatigue, but hopefully some of this stuff uh, reinvigorates some things. Um, we should probably start with, well, I have one thing for movies, uh, and this was something that was shared via the Hollywood reporter over this weekend. I'm not sure if you've heard this. Did you hear about the Matthew Vaughn, uh, storm controversy? Oh, did I, it was, <laughs> I it was, it was, it was a headline that was hard to read because yeah. it, it was such a, a blow to the chest. I mean, as a, as a comic book fan, as a Halle Berry fan, to hear how they they duped her horribly into, oh, yeah, yeah, come back, come back to X-Men 3, right? Correct? Yeah, Last Stand, yep. Last Stand, come back for the Last Stand, and we're going to give you this massive role and all these bells and whistles, and Storm is going to be this centerpiece that even someone not Halle Berry reading this would be like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. Fans would have gone jumped backwards for this. I mean, whew. 
I mean, you want to talk this, about like the, somebody, a character that's criminally underserved in the X-Men yeah, franchise. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's what made me just get exasper- as- exasperated because it was just like, wow. I mean, Storm, in the first movie, they didn't seem to know what the heck to do with her. In the second movie, they changed up her accent and a haircut, but still didn't know what to do with her. And then yeah. in the third movie, you're like, oh, maybe they're going to change it up and add something. And, oh, but maybe some people at that time knew that this script was out there and it's like yo Halle Berry's about to get this big push she's gonna make this amazing X-Men 3 and she's gonna be the centerpiece oh wait what Matthew Vaughn's leaving why why, why is all these changes coming around and now how how many years later uh the the, uh, first class I want to say it's like 2005 I mean this is this is this is this is you know, a, I mean, a first time, class, a uh, time traveling time. punch to the jaw <laughs> <laughs> to hear to hear this. 2000, like, 2006. So we're talking 15 years, 17, 17. Oh, am I getting no, I'm math terrible right? at math. I'm terrible at math. I think it is uh, <laughs> seven. Yeah, 17 years, 17, almost years. old enough, almost old enough to, to vote <laughs> seven. Yeah, 17 years later. Yeah, just like my jaw is swollen and, you know, feeling bad for Halle Berry. Like, wow, this is what they promised you. And, Nope. For those who don't know the details, uh, director Matthew Vaughn, who had worked, on, who is most famous in the X Men world for having working on First Class, which a lot of people dug. Um, apparently, he was reached out to prior to First Class. He was reached out for X Three. They wanted him to direct it, um, but he went into a meeting and he noticed that the script was slightly off. And these are his words: "I went into one of the executives' office and I saw an X Three script, and I immediately knew it was a lot fatter." I was like, what the hell is this draft? And someone went, don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm the director. I'm worrying about this draft. He wouldn't tell me, so I grabbed it, literally. It was like a crazy moment. I opened to the first page and it said, Africa, storm, kids dying of no water. She creates a thunderstorm and saves all these children. And I went, what is this? And they said, oh, it's Halle Berry's script. And I went, okay, because uh, she hasn't signed up yet. Uh, but this is what she wants it to be. And once she signs up, we'll throw it in the bin. They, that's what they told him. Uh, and he's like, wow, you're going to do that to an Oscar winning actress who plays Storm? I'm out of here. And he quit right on the spot. Uh, it's interesting to hear this after the fact because this is the same film that would go on and kill Cyclops indiscriminately before the credits came up. <laughs> so, and then Professor Xavier gets murked in this film. So, um, what I guess is the most heartbreaking is that uh, we've countless times, especially in our Black Adam discourse, have derided celebrities for taking the check and not really caring about what they're in. The idea that Storm being portrayed to her fullest potential is something that would have brought Halle Berry back in almost endears her more to me, that she would have wanted to play a Storm that was more accurate and had more to do. Um, and ultimately not given that chance and again oscar award winning so uh it's good just to see a, that everyone's still playing fair <laughs> yeah it's just an absolute waste of her time when you look back on those three movies and her best moments probably came in uh days of the future's past yeah i always think of at least i chose a side that's the, that's the thing i think of storm uh the most uh you know there but with all this going on, you know, the X-Men are set to come soon and people are theorizing it's post-secret wars. Uh, a rumor going around now, which is like the worst kept, the worst kept rumor, if you've ever read Secret Wars, is that uh, Secret Wars will provide for some sort of reboot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, how, how do you feel hearing that news? Is a reboot too soon? Um, could this possibly be a, a whole nother golden age for the MCU or... Do you think they're kind of milking it at this point? It's really hard to say because it's a matter of execution, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there are things that have been done in the MCU that people have absolutely loved that I would have said, man, that's not going to work. And yeah. there are things that I love that to this day, people are like, man, that, that made me hate the MCU. So to <laughs> right. me, it's all a matter of execution. If they do it well, and and to me, honestly, slow the train down. I miss the heyday of the MCU where it was two or three movies a year, no television shows, and you got, got almost no news. So yeah. 
now we have all these shows to keep up with. We have what three, four movies a year. Yeah. But all that seems to be slowing down. I haven't even started watching Loki because Well, it's a thing seemingly where everything is so connected that if one production goes wrong or awry or anything, everything else seems to suffer for it. Well, uh, not not just that, not just that, but how much stuff have we encountered in the last two or three years that some of the stuff hasn't even been touched again? Like the My giant celestial Sean, in the ocean, <laughs> right? So, so that even on a even on a smaller scale, oh Shang Chi, you know he he gets taken away by uh, Wong. Wong, yeah. We've seen Wong a couple times. You think he'd at least drop a line like, "Oh, I'm still training Shang to do something." You know, just give us the line. She-Hulk. Right, right. Yeah. Just like, say something, or even in the background, I hear him. You know, doing some karate or some some kung fu. Give me, give, give us something to show that there is there this connective tissue between these worlds, because that's just Shang Chi. We so what, what's I mean, Moon Knight is still out there. No, out no, about, no yeah. mention. Just the, all these connective tissues, but yet. What, where's the payoff? And even I, as a as a someone who likes the long game, who understands these long form stories as as a long time comic book reader, you you you're losing the casual audience, the people yeah. who are like, man, I I spent six hours or ten hours watching this, and I haven't heard about it again in a year or two years. I don't care now, you know. Even on more recent scales, you got you got stuff that happened in Hawkeye. The fact that they brought Daredevil back around and that pff, talk about talk about news. Hey, look, the writer strikes oh, yeah, over. Yeah, we're the getting, writer strikes we're over. That, you're all yeah. fired. <laughs> you're all fired. Like, what is that? What kind of what is that sending to, to viewers? What is that sending to viewers? So it, it, um, it's, it's a little bit of what was happening or what is currently happening with DC, right? Like people are like, why am I going to watch any of this? If you guys are telling me you guys are already going <laughs> to oh, <man, laughs> all this I, up I feel, bad. This I feel up. bad for Aquaman, too. Yeah. I do. I oof, not even. I mean, oof, oh man. do you think? Oh, who do you think is going to? Or what character? If if there are set, because they've said almost that they're willing to bring every character back in some way, shape, or form. What character do you think would be the hardest to recast, given our history with a Thor, a Cap, you know, a Spider Man? Etc. Because I already think that Wolverine has some big shoes to fill. Whenever that, whenever that happens, people are already yeah. going to have their minds made up about that. Um, Hugh Jackman educated a nation, <laughs> so whether that was good or bad, uh, who do you think in the MCU might have a hard time? For me personally, yeah. I would say Cap. You know, seeing seeing Chris Evans not have that shield anymore, not putting on that Star Spangled costume. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard because that dude sold me on his cap from the first line he dropped in Cap, uh, the, the, the first Avenger. When yeah. the dude asks him, hey, man, it's almost, it almost seems like you don't want to go to this war when they're reading the headlines before they're getting tested to get drafted. And his immediate response was, nope. It's a single word yeah. that just captured the essence of Cap. That was like, yeah, man, I don't care that I'm a skinny, frail guy. I, I want to defend my country. And I got the biggest heart in this, in this lineup. So I'm going to do something. So that that was just like whoa, because I was up until that very moment, I was still like Johnny Storm, man. You're Johnny Storm. You're Johnny Storm. Yeah. You're the heartthrob <laughs> from not a not another teen movie. And you that know, banana but, but yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you, you're t- trying to tell me that now you're you know the heart and soul of the Avengers, the leader of the Avengers, and he got me on that first line, and then seeing w- what he did. You know, the, to me, the Captain America trilogy, and yeah, I'm about to upset a bunch of DC slash Batman fans. That that trilogy to me is is better than the Dark Knight trilogy. Interesting. Right. The, the internet is not broken. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, at least not right. now. <laughs> not, not yet, right? So yeah. yeah. So so having to see someone else put on that outfit, I mean, it was hard. It was hard watching. Um, I must say, John Walker. <laughs> John Walker. John Walker, dude. Like that was brutal. That was brutal. Uh, and the, Harry, the Harry Potter. How dare you stand where he stood? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Precisely. And that was hard. And as much as I love seeing Sam get the shield passed to him, and then eventually putting on that beautiful costume in a uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, even that was like, oh man, like Chris Evans is gone. Like what? Are we, like man, like what? Are we, what's gonna happen? 
But to me, the fans, the fans that they're, they're they're having so much difficulty with the idea of seeing someone else put on the Iron Man armor that there's yeah. already talks that they're going to bring back the holographic Tony Stark, uh, Robert Downey Jr. AI sort of, uh, yeah, which I think is I think is a brilliant marketing strategy and as well as a, a beautiful salute to the comics because that is in fact what did happen to yeah. Iron Man for a while where he he put himself he was in a just ahead <laughs> he put himself he put himself in a in a self induced coma and but yet still programmed himself to be an AI that trained Riri Williams so what right. better way talk about another thing that is just still dangling out there we got Riri Williams as Ironheart and I don't know even know if that show is still happening anymore, but that would be great if you had Robert Downey Jr. coming back as just the AI, the same way he he gave himself his own will and testament at the end of at the end of Endgame. Mm-hmm. Have that just be the character, and even if Robert Downey Jr. is not totally enamored with the idea of coming back, you're not really coming back. And how easy it is to film those scenes, you can film yeah. that in your and house. Th- and, you, just- and you got to think majority of his in. In the helmet scenes are like what in a dark room, him sitting in a stool going, Hey, I see right. the uh, missiles uh, or whatever. You know, so so I I totally see but people having just that that because uh, what got most people into the MCU? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. So seeing some seeing somebody else put on his armor, you know, I I can I can see that. That's like seeing someone else, you know, dating your girlfriend or something like that. You know, you don't want to <laughs> right. I don't want to see that. Is there anyone you are excited with the idea of a reboot? Maybe someone you think they didn't get right the first time around, villain hero. Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking at Hulk, man. I'm kind of looking over there. And really? I'm just like, really? I just, I just, I just want more. And the thing is, like, I think um, Mark Ruffalo is fine as Bruce Banner, but he doesn't give me the scientist Bruce Banner, like nervous, you know, like with like the bubbling pot kind of stuff he's been kind of played up as the comedic hulk for a while um and i i just feel like there's more to explore with that character but i understand that the studio's hands are tied because universal for years had the rights to any hulk film so they couldn't really tell the story that they wanted to tell there and then on the villain side taskmaster I need me a better Taskmaster, please and thank you. Anthony Masters, I think, is hilarious in the comics and deadly. Um, and he should be shown the same way uh, in the MCU moving forward. I can give you that on um, the Taskmaster. With regard to, I don't know, I love Mark Ruffalo. Though. I think he does come across as very bumbling. And even when he first showed up in the Avengers movie, I was a big defender of him because you know everybody loved Ed Norton. But I felt like everybody loved Ed Norton because of Ed Norton. I tell people yeah. that guy was way too confident of a Bruce Banner. <laughs> Bruce right, Banner, right, right. Bruce Banner would not be trying to save a beautiful Brazilian woman the way he was so brazen about it in this movie. He was you like know, doing he, parkour in that movie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was he's, like, he's, he's like doing parkour. Like he's learning. He's learning <laughs> Portuguese. He's so coy but smooth. And then it's all in the, the way, diaphragm, bro. <laughs> right, 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 right. Whereas <laughs> I love that that Mark Ruffalo in the Avengers movie. He looks so disheveled. Like even, even when they when when he's trying to present himself as a professional, he's just like, man, your your, your tie's a little off. Your shirt is kind of untucked, and yeah. you, you you're you just don't look confident. Like even in the exchanges between him and uh, Tony Stark, you know, Tony's just this fast talking, super confident. Like we're just gonna rock and roll. And you know, Mark Ruffalo is Bruce Banner. You can just tell, like, man. I, I don't even want to be talking to you right now because you're distracting. And so I dug that. I'd like Mark, Mark Ruffalo as, as him, but somebody that I, I would look forward to them recast talking about villains, mm-hmm. bring back Red Skull. We need a solid Red Skull. Uh, I love Hugo Weaving, but he, he himself refuses to come back. Bring back, bring you. The, so you want a modern, a modern Red Skull, like a Red Skull in our current timeline. Yes. And I would like him to be a, 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 a how do you uh, a Thanos level villain, not just oh he shows up as this because it's the Red Skull. The Red Skull yeah. has been responsible for so many atrocities in the MC in the Marvel universe that to just make him this one off villain, I felt is such a disservice to that character. So he he deserves his own bigger arc where it's like oh man this this is a dude who can pull 
something heinous off, not just, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to launch a fancy plane with some mini planes inside of it and then essentially defeat myself because I grabbed the cosmic cube like a dummy. Because it was shiny. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> I, I think Red Skull is an interesting choice because you can also rope in a lot of uh, street level heroes for that. You can show the evil nature that can be done with with money and influence as opposed to uh, straight up lasers and <laughs> flame powers and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You can, re you know, there, there's different levels to these, this kind of stuff and it can definitely get there. I hope people have the patience to get to the reboot. <laughs> you know, I well, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. I, 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 per I personally say leave it alone. I would, I would yeah. rather them just say, look, we're hitting pause for a little while. Like do, um, do what they've done with the Batman. Even if they're going to do a reboot, do like what they were the Batman movies. Give it a break. Give it a break. I mean, how long of a break did we have between that last Schumacher Batman until we got to the first Nolan movie? It was it was probably close to ten years or, or very maybe a close. Less. I want to go ninety seven to uh, two thousand and five. Look at that. So yeah, it was very it was very a little close. Bit. It was it was close, but still some years. And I don't think Disney's gonna allow that. This is like, yeah, uh, you gotta think they would have to go all the way closer to 2030 to cast cap and all that kind of stuff there. And I, I have a feeling we'll probably get them around 2026, 2027, uh, yeah. which is interesting timeline because that's when DC's starting their <laughs> they're wrapping up their stuff. We're about to go mm -hmm. lap them again. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, so DC, you thought you're in first place? Nope. On your left. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> On your left. And I mean, uh, talking about recasting, what about the idea that, you know, James Gunn is essentially probably going to recast everyone? Yes. Um, he said it was noted that everyone is being recast. All the, the mostly like the members of the Justice League, like the seven members mm -hmm. of the Justice League. First of all, uh, they're never hiring Ray Fisher to do anything because <laughs> of what, Who? you know, his Ray Who? Fisher. Oh, Who? Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 because you know he was so outspoken against the brass at the time mm -hmm. so i don't see any of that happening cavill like you cannot tell me in 10 years he doesn't show up as either kingdom come superman or uh what's his face um injustice superman they'll find a way to rope, find a way. rope his ass back in gal kind of makes me a, a little sad i did dig her wonder woman but who knows where the character could go you know sans that ezra miller's ezra miller and then uh, the big thing is uh, it's been heavily rumored that Jason Momoa is staying with DC. He's just not going to be playing Aquaman. He'd be playing Lobo. Right. Um, the question I have for you, should they just go back to blonde shortcut Aquaman? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I think, you, that, know, I think you, that you don't think, you don't think Aqua bro. I do. I, I personally do dig Aqua bro mostly because Jason Momoa did it. I don't yeah. think another person can pull off the way he did it. And mm -hmm. so, and then to keep in line with the comic books, because as fun as, as funny as Aqua Bro, I've never heard that until now. As fun <laughs> as, as fun as he made that character being in comic stores after the first Aquaman movie came out or around the time they came out. Yeah. Or even, even before that, I'm sorry. Yeah. Even before that, the Justice League, people coming in going, where's, where's the Aquaman from the movie? And like, no, nah, yeah. it's not. So I can't see. James Gunn and DC Warner Brothers making that, doing that again. I think this mm -hmm. time around they'll say, "Look, man, make make the dude look like the guy in the comics." Even if yeah. they say, even if they do say, "Oh, you know, give him that '90s Aquaman look of the long hair with the goatee," just to kind of still give him that edge and familiarity of the Jason Momoa Aquaman. Yeah, that's that's not going to happen. I can totally see them doing something, you know, because as, as the did Michael B. Jordan Superman movie still still happening? I, I don't know. know. I, I would believe that it's still a possibility because even though James Gunn is doing what he's doing, they're still doing Elseworld stories like Joker. Right. You know? Right. Um, so I gotta believe that there's still at least room for that. Yeah. Um, but with yeah, with Aquaman and James Gunn is silly enough to just do it on the face. The man brought a starro, right? He just right. did it. Like he didn't, he didn't ask right. nobody. He just did it. So I can totally see him wanting to go for a more earnest um, Aquaman when it comes to that situation there. Uh, I saw a report 
that says that in line with other uh, people who've played the clown prince of crime in the past, that our girl, Lady Gaga, is getting a bit uh, method in her acting in uh, oh, really? Joker 2 and uh, refuses to answer to anything but Lee. Short for Harley. Oh, boy. <laughs> so it's starting up again. I don't think you necessarily need to go crazy to play these roles. Maybe it does help. I don't know. But it shouldn't cost you your own sanity or your life in cases of other people who played uh, this character. What do you think about uh, Lady Gaga? Are you excited that she's playing Harley? Uh, do you have any feelings towards this Joker 2 rumored musical sequel? I, I, uh, I'm not very <laughs> excited about it. I'm honestly not. As much as I did end up liking that joker movie it felt like okay it's its own event mm -hmm. and the way the movie ends i was satisfied with that so to be going back to it and then, then they gave you doomsday go, clock <laughs> that and as well as well as well as as well as the idea that it's going to be a musical yeah it's like okay okay are we, we're just being it feels like we're being silly for silly sake to just do something right. different I hope it's good. I, I generally do. Lady Gaga is someone that has surprised me over the last bunch of years. You know, when she first came on the scene as, as a entertainer, as a singer, I was not mm -hmm. that highly impressed. I felt like, oh, you, you're trying to fill in Madonna's shoes. But right. then when I saw that her talent was, what for me, was there, as well as when I saw that, oh, you have an actual voice when she performed the Sound of Music at the Academy Awards, that blew right. me away. And even seeing some of her acting ability and other projects, I can't remember any of them at the moment. Yeah, like but Star said, is Born. She just did the House of Gucci. Thank you. Uh, yes. Recently, yes, yes, exactly. In those, in those feet, in those feature films, yeah, she she killed it. So having her cast as Harley Quinn, I was cool. But this method acting, I can, I wonder if that's <laughs> just rubbing off from Joaquin Phoenix because Joaquin Phoenix is that nut. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he is totally that, is. He is that guy. Because and you can totally see he's perfect like he maintained that mentality with making have you seen the, the, the napoleon trailer no oh, <laughs> is he a psycho just, in that too <laughs> oh yeah it's just like oh dude you you believed yeah. you were napoleon for these six months of filming and i can totally you know just like do not call me joaquin i am napoleon you know i'm yeah you know monsieur bonaparte you know I, you just know you're totally. just talking about you know um you know uh the dc we were just talking about the direction they were going and whether or not the michael b jordan thing's happening penguin's still happening the batman 2 still happening right like why will right. they build their whole universe on the other side? It's going to be a very confusing time where all this stuff comes to comes to roost. And I like the Batman. I just am a bit over that part of that hero's <laughs> journey. I feel like I've seen that part, that one specific part of Batman's journey. I don't know. Every ten years, they 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 refresh it. So I'm I'm excited for the rumored Brave and the Bold, which is supposed to have Damien in it, and we'll see sort of kind of how they are they going to skip three robins would gun do that or are they built in do we get bat family are we getting flashbacks you know et cetera and so forth we all be pretty interesting but yeah. uh you know and they're gonna I milk hope, that batman and i just personally hope they keep as much of that under wraps as possible that's also true as much as i love yeah. reporting on the news i hate reporting on just rumor after rumor after rumor you know? oh yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent um you gotta, gotta take a lot of this stuff with a grain of salt yeah what's not a rumor though is it's almost been confirmed that marvel is going back to the drawing board when it comes to daredevil born again uh, apparently they had shot several episodes they had the series was uh starting up before the sag and the writer strike um but they are tanking it all. <laughs> they said that it was a bit dry. It was more of a lawyer procedural. They were also saying that, um, you know, grain of salt again, that Foggy dies in it at some point. And so that causes Matt to retire. It was all a very, very weird situation. And to be honest, the entirety of this show is a weird situation because it's almost seemingly just a reboot. So they won't have to pay the original writers and actors as if they're doing a season four. Because contractually, if they were doing a season four, everyone's pay would raise from what they were being paid for season three. But oh. by doing it by doing it this way, this is a quote unquote new series. And so they can start everyone back at the bottom. Uh, you know, and get old. 
you know, the good truthful way, right? Right. I mean, so it's a, it was a bookkeeping move. Yes. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Just um, D'Onofrio the went. People were going crazy, but D'Onofrio got on Twitter and was like, "Every project I've ever dealt with had creative issues. It, it's us trying to make the best product." Um, and so, you know, I welcome any changes that are to come of this because, yeah, they basically overhauled the whole. Um, they have got rid of full directors, <laughs> you know, and there's also a rumor going on that they are supposedly doing more quality control and that these shows are going to start having showrunners and, you know, different, you know, uh, different writing staff. Some of that sounds like quality control. Some of that sounds like things that they probably have to do now that the writers got their way with certain things. Um, and they're just trying to get ahead by saying they're doing it for the fans. Um, regardless, with all the success that the writers have gotten in their strike, the actors are still on strike. They've not, you know, come to terms with their contracts. So a lot of this stuff is still going to be up in the air until they're able to do that kind of stuff. And I think I heard that we have enough stuff to get through this fall season, you know, like pre film stuff from like the summer pre written stuff from before that will last us to about the fall season, but people are going to start panicking. They're either going to straight up pay these actors or, you know, it's going to, it's going to be rough. It's going to be a rough, a rough time of it. Is there room in your heart for a new Daredevil? Did you did you like what Netflix was doing already? And that's you know that ended when it ended. Um, I I really loved the uh, the Netflix Daredevil. It was gritty. It it embraced the the dirtiness of that corner of the Marvel universe. There, it wasn't it wasn't bright. It wasn't shiny. It wasn't Spider Man. It wasn't Cap. Even Cap. It was street level hey i'm i'm going into horrible neighborhoods and getting into nasty fights to save one person you know this yep. wasn't this grand scale things occurring like like a, like in it wasn't battling thanos you know it was literally saving yeah. a life or, or a couple lives all the while the character himself is so interest in introspective of his own life so it was mm -hmm. it's it's just this deep dive into a character that how'd you feel about moon knight i liked moon knight i did like moon knight um but i liked it because i read the lemire run okay and so it was it was more like a you know i think it could have went deeper i could have think it could have went other places and that's, um, and that's and that's kind of what, what i'm getting at like moon knight there is there was so much depth there that they could have gone to but i felt like it was like a the, bit surface for, to, for it, you. It was a bit. It was a bit surface, as well as it's, I hate to sound like the jaded fan who says this, but it was just that classic. Anytime we're going to get some more depth, punchline. Yeah, you know, a, jo yeah. a joke has to be has to be thrown in instead of really yeah. exploring it. Like I, I love the episode where you get his his origin to the the abuse he got from his parents, and where he starts to come up with these personalities to protect himself. And I was like, man, let's let's go. Let's go into that. And what we nope, got Nope, CGI was, fight. We're going to right, <laughs> C CGI fight, uh, a lovable hippo guiding a boat. Yeah, you know. Yeah. All right, come on. Give, give me that depth. So so seeing now that Daredevil go from, you know, Netflix, that grittiness to now, all right, are they going to Disney this up? Whew, that's just that's just what uh, worries me. That's just what worries me. Did you me. see him in um, She-Hulk? I did. And... As fun think? as it was, as fun as it was, it didn't feel like the Matt Murdock that we saw, especially at the end of season three of Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this was this was this guy was quippy and funny and real quick to be like, hey, green lady, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the part that I dig of that characterization is, to my knowledge, Matt's always pulling tail. So that I, I dig on, you know, I dig on the whole flirting thing and being able to flirt, but I do agree. There's, there's certain levels that I didn't see in that MCU version that I saw in ours and, um, you know, the Netflix version. And I would hope that they would use or do some of that when it comes to born again. My biggest thing about that Netflix show was like, it's the first time I've ever seen like the protagonist get his ass kicked. And a lot of this superhero stuff 
they come up unscathed. It's shaky cam, and you seen Arrow. That man mm-hmm. never took a punch in his life. <laughs> you know, nope. he's always too quick, block, 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 always getting it. Mac gets his ass kicked. He gets ass kicked a lot. You don't got mm-hmm. superpowers. Yeah. Um, and you know, watching that and realizing that he's despite all that, he's still continuing to fight. Like you were just saying, his the hallmark of that series is the first hallway fight. And that first hallway fight is for one child. Right. One child in captivity, not for the block, not to get blown up, not for, you know, you to stop the purple alien because he's going to decimate half of the entire universe. One child. Right. Yeah. Right. And it kind of just he, shows you he, he's willing to do all that, you know, right for for the one. And that's right. kind of the embodiment of what superhero media should be. But, you know, exactly. it, it ramps up pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Are you still watching The Walking Dead? Slowly. <laughs> I'm literally still finishing. Like I'm, I'm like a shambling zombie. Yeah, I'm slowly. We are the Walking through. Dead. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, we are the Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm slowly going through the last season. I'm maybe at, at the like the last three episodes. Okay. Fear the Walking Dead. I don't even know. Uh, the la- once they once they survived a nuclear bomb going off mm-hmm. because they had rubber suits. I was like, yeah, this sounds like a Indiana Jones jump, fridge jump, moment. <laughs> jump, jumping, jumping over the irradiated zombie shark. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm slowly going through it. I am excited to just see what's happening on those individual shows that are coming out. You right. know, because da- Daryl was definitely carried that show for the most part. Seeing Rick come back because I did like Andrew Lincoln as as Rick. Are the are the Daryl epi- is, is the Daryl show just like Daryl centric episodes of the walking dead. Because I haven't seen basically... any of it, but uh, okay. it's only a few episodes in, but I can't imagine. I, it's only him because he, he somehow, I have no idea how gets to, I believe France. Oh, wow. It's just him by himself. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's basically Daryl meeting, meeting <laughs> entirely new villages of people. And maybe hopefully, hopefully, cause I, I haven't watched it. Hopefully some accents. <laughs> Yes, yes. Because yes. if he meets a bunch of American sounding people, I'll be very, I'll be very annoyed. Right. In the, shadow, right looks in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, and it's like, what's up, Billy Bob? I reckon you know, I was here on vacation <laughs> and I was ready. I just love, like, for the whole rest of the show, he just looks like a feral cat. Like, he just stopped cutting his hair. He just stopped <laughs> trimming his beard. He's just, he's just this feral animal that just grunts half the time. But yeah, we got a, um, a teaser trailer for The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. That's the spinoff with Michonne and Rick. So mm-hmm. I was just trying to gauge your excitement. Me, I got no beef with it, but I'm not going to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I appreciate the invite. I had my fun. And if this is what Walking Dead fans want, I hope they get a buffet. Rick was possibly the best character in the television series. Michonne, a tremendous character for everything that they were able to do for her and deny being able to show her acting chops in so many different ways because one thing they did in the show that they didn't do in the comics was they they give us those flashbacks of her or was it like she was dreaming talking to the people that she eventually would make into the uh the her watchdogs her zombie watchdogs or whatever Mm -hmm. um you know they they play around with all that kind of stuff um i was just curious as to like what else is there to say Right, no, like, I, and, I, and I agree. I agree. Which I mean, even as I was watching that last season, I mean, season eleven finished a while ago now, yeah. and I, I was just like, okay. And once I heard that the ending was was not a real ending, which was, yeah. it was just like, oh, and now three more shows. Dun, dun, dun. I was yeah. like, what am I watching this for? Because <laughs> because the comic book the, of The Walking Dead to me mm-hmm. has one of the best endings in comics. Uh, are you aware of it? No, but I did. I did know that it ended. I must have dropped out shortly after they they put Negan in prison. So yeah, I, I missed it may like be, the whispers. Yeah, it was in, um, quickly, fairly quickly after the whispers. And do you know about what's that name of that town? The oh my god, well the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth. It it ends there. Mm-hmm. Which you know, Rick, I believe Robert Kirkman had said from the from near the beginning of the of the book <clears throat> that it, the Walking Dead is the story of Rick Grimes, and when Rick Grimes dies, the story is over. Which a lot of typical comic book fans think, well, you're never going to kill your own gravy train, 
you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then Robert Kirkman, I don't know where kills Rick in the series. And mm-hmm. I think uh, two issues later, the series ends and it ends in a oh, way okay. that it really, the, the show ends. He does, he does a whole entire flash forward where they basically show that yeah, the other, they're surviving now in the zombie apocalypse and, and the world is rebuilding. And it's, yeah. it's a nice, it's a nice ending. They, did they make a statue for him? I believe they did. I want to say they did. I vaguely remember, unless I'm making that up, I, mean, I might be mixing it up with the Dark Knight <laughs> or Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Which, by the no, way, uh, off, the, off the rip, that was a terrible statue that they made of Batman in Dark Knight Rises. But to be honest, they never really got a good look at the guy. So, you know. I'll, I'll just. <laughs> wouldn't I'll it just wouldn't it. have been great if the statue looked like the man bat, like how people were like, "Oh my oh, god, yeah. it's, a li- it's a living bat," and it's just this giant creature, of, you know? But like, it's smiling at the same time. I'm like, oh yeah, he, he right. He's like dead. the person who ends up making in their 3D program, do they go? Is that Bruce Wayne? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute! If I just move this and put this over here. And no, in that in that in that very in that very instance, you know, Michael Caine as Alfred shows up, going, uh, "You're not going to say anything about this boy." Like, oh, I, 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 I failed sorry. you. I failed you. <laughs> I didn't find you in in Paris, so I won't let this I, bloke blow up, blow up your identity. I failed you. <laughs> oh, that's so good. He retired from acting. He's officially retired from acting. I saw the announcement of his retirement, and I thought it was an announcement of him not being on this earth anymore. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so of the two pieces of news, r- rest, my I'll son. Take <laughs> I'll take it. I'll done, take it. You've done. You've done. You've done a lot of great things. <laughs> and now I just say my cocaine whenever I want to say his name, and it makes me laugh. My cocaine. <laughs> my cocaine. <laughs> See, <laughs> always makes me laugh. Oh my god, it's terrible. <laughs> um. Oh my god. There's the Godzilla show coming to Apple TV. Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Are you oh a big my. Godzilla Universe guy? No, I'm not. No? I, but I do, have, I, I do have an appreciation for it. I, I'd watch it if I had Apple TV. I'd right, give it right, a shot. Right. Is this whole Apple? You know, there are certain barriers I just refuse to <laughs> break. And just, right, right, right. I'm sorry. I know I'm uh, offending all you Apple lovers. But when I hear Apple TV, it immediately makes me go, I don't care. You're not getting yeah, a Snapchat. Yeah. You're saying is that what you're? Yeah, I'm just. No? I'm just not. I just don't care. <laughs> with the exception, with the exception of uh, Ted Lasso, which I still have really to watch. I heard. Ted I heard Lasso's it's fantastic. Really it looks fantastic. But literally, I go. I watch that. Mm, Apple TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I make, get a, it. make a make a deal with some network television thing, or 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 partner up with Netflix or somebody. It's, you know, just put it somewhere else. Give it, give it another chance. Because putting this barrier of Apple TV, I just, I just don't dig it. Uh, there's, there's already too many things to watch, and on a whole, I've just not heard great things outside of. I mean, outside of Ted Lasso, what, what has really been acclaimed? Well, I think they were looking for their big IP thing, so this might be what kind of fleshes it out. Um, I hear, I hear from people who have Apple TV that the money goes that like you can see where the money goes in the production of this stuff. Whereas mm. sometimes Netflix, you hear that a show is being paid, whatever million dollars per episode. And you're like, where is that? <laughs> I don't see that right. anywhere here. Right. Um, so hopefully something comes to fruition. I am always against some of the directions they go with this monster stuff. Cause I kind of just want to see a punch up and they kind of want to make it, you know, <laughs> something else. Um, and it's not, it's not deep enough. To resonate, it's it's also like a surface level, you know, whenever they do like a human interaction story with these animals, it's never it's never anything to, in my knowledge memorable. Um, and so I have no doubt Godzilla Kong, you know, Mothra will continue to make money uh for them. But oh, I definitely. would really like to see I would really like to see how this stuff uh gets readapted. Yeah, I mean uh, I, the- I I like you said the uh, the Brian Cranston Godzilla still has a sour, leaves a sour taste in my mouth because it's like, oh, it's called Godzilla. We got Brian Cranston. We killed Brian Cranston in like the first. He was in forty-five all minutes of the trailers. He was right. in every him, single trailer. We kill him damn near immediately, he, and I feel bad not just for the actor but for the character himself. I'm like the dude gets no closure. <laughs> it's no closure. Oh yeah, in this story, 
except that oh i was right and i'm now i'm dead great <laughs> and and we see godzilla for how how long i think a, a total of like five or six minutes in the entire movie right and when right. we got the chunk of him it was of course it was dark so that that angered me and then we got i did dig the the one where he fought, fought all the monsters. He fights, I believe, King Kidora, and he fights, and he teams up with Mothra in some way. It was one. It was one with the girl from Stranger Things. I yes, this is King of Monsters. Yeah, King of King of Monsters. I dug that. I dug that for the most part. But again, the thing that I didn't need was all the human interaction stuff. Just like when I watched yeah. Transformers, I want to see Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and punching Megatron. I want to see that. The moment you tell me I'm supposed to give a damn about these humans, no, I don't. I don't <laughs> care. Never. I'm doing. It. I'm doing some quick math here as things look, I just need a release date for this may. So, um, Godzilla with Brian Cranston comes out may 8th ish, uh, 2014, which makes it about almost 10 years old. One could say, but also about, um, let's see five carry the, uh, three, Eight months removed from the finale of Breaking Bad. That's like the height of Brian Cranston. That's right. like people finished that series and found out that the next thing he was going to do is Godzilla. And they went to go see Godzilla <laughs> to see Brian Cranston and his ass got got. Spoiler alert. But if we come on again, it's been 10 years. What are you people doing? Right. Right. And yeah, again, yeah. if anything, we're saving you so that you don't go away Seriously. thinking you you're going to get a two hour Brian Cranston don't. movie. Watch, watch a, watch a recap video on YouTube. If yeah. you'll get more yeah. out of that than you will that movie. The King of Monsters was all right. And then I, for the, again, I dug for the most part the Godzilla vs. Kong or Kong vs. Godzilla. But what gets in the way? The wacky science of that movie. As well yeah. as the human characters. I didn't anytime all those humans were about to die, I was like, Yes, kill them. Kill them all. I hope I yeah. hope God, King Kong and Godzilla eat you all for you fools thinking you had something <laughs> to say between these two people. Yeah, I have an unpopular opinion in the sense that I, I like the monster stuff I think feel like is like horror in the sense that I don't really want a lot of lore. It can be some lore, but I feel like the more lore you try to make, the worse it ends up becoming. These things should feel like a force of nature. You know, right. they should, mm -hmm. they should be unpredictable. They should be, but it's like, oh, well, thousands of, it's like, oh, here we go. You know, like, <laughs> kind especially of when they um, forced the tie in, like, oh, and Kong was our protector and we protected him. No, nobody. Yeah, no, 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 mm -mm. no. He came around, he ate some of us and then he left. Does the timeline <laughs> go to like, is this Kong the one that's going to climb the the building? <laughs> like, I, how does, I, I, <laughs> Like, is that how this whole universe ends? You get put on a boat to New York, and you're like, oh, I get it. It's going all the way around. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to see that again. I don't. Yeah. Oh, and I totally skipped. That was great. The the Sam Jackson Kong. I thought that yes. was great. That was that was damn Skull, near Skull perfect. Island, right? The one with Loki. Skull Island, yes. Skull Island, with Loki and Captain uh, Marvel. Captain, in Captain it. Marvel. That's right. <laughs> The movie uh, that yeah. the movie that helped to tie all the MCU people together, you know, yeah, oh, stuff like yeah, that. That, that was, Not I mean, they they show up in helicopters and go, "Hey, what's that giant ape looking creature in, in the distance?" And he's he fittingly starts chucking logs at them. Yeah, they, they, he's they're literally mosquitoes. Like he's just mm -hmm. walking around. There's just these big, angrily buzzing, mechanical vehicles flying around him in his space. So he's exactly. Like, eh. It's like you guys, you guys must work with those under creatures that that pop out at night. That I, I dug that movie. It, it was yeah. it was dumb. Skull, I think Scott Island is pretty good, and they're going mm -hmm. to, um, like I said, I I think that we already there's a famous mechanical <laughs> monster <laughs> that uh, also made himself known in this in the Godzilla universe. So it leads me to believe that they're pulling out all the stops when it comes to monster references and monsters that they could include uh, in the future and stuff like that. And while they're milking it over here, uh, something they barely scratched the surface with on the other side is invincible, but we got a season two trailer. We've had this conversation off air about how much of invincible there still is left to cover. And um, in this trailer, seemingly without too many spoilers for those who haven't read it looks like they're going to be covering the angstrom levy of it all am i saying that angstrom that was his name right angstrom angstrom <laughs> yes the angstrom the multiversal viewer correct 
Yes. So mm-hmm. they look like they're going to be tackling the Angstrong Levy of it all, and with him, the Invincible War. Uh, I think the person at the end warning the humans is not our mark. I think that's right. just one spoilers. of the spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, spoilers. 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 Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited because I think that this book goes into some crazy places, um, and I really want to see where this goes but similarly i'm looking at it and this is probably going to cover what another volume <laughs> right they still have mm-hmm. so much more but i'm not rushing them at all um but it's also still been confirmed that they're doing live action invincible it's been held up by the writer and then now the uh screen actors guild strike do you think that dilutes things I do. Being working and on so, both simultaneously? Yes. So I believe it does. And I'm very happy if it delays it or even totally kills <laughs> it. Because the animated show is so good. It captures the series beautifully. And it doesn't feel like I, I'm watching a cartoon. Yeah. So then, because I mean, how, how will they do this? As you were just saying, the way they're pacing the material out, Invincible was roughly 150 issues. And mm-hmm. the way they're pacing it out, they could easily do five or six seasons of this show and give give the material it, its due justice. So if that's the case, if you have that much, and then you start also churning out a live action show, it does dilute it. And I think it confuses people because then it's a matter of, well, what matters or, or are these working together? or because And then, you know, with live action, they're definitely going to change some things up. So people who watch yeah. the animated show and then they watch the live action, it's gonna be like, well, are they they're different, but they're they're different, but they're the same story. I don't think you can match the brutality. How do you match the brutality in the in, oh, in something like that? Like you that? Can you can you redo that that train sequence in the in the first season in live action? No. Not in live action, but apparently according to a trailer from Mortal Kombat, you can do it in a video game. Yeah, because Omni Man is coming to Mortal Kombat, and they gave him the train fatality, which is incredibly sick. Um, I think it's kind of ironic that that Mortal Kombat has both Homelander and Omni Man, seeing as they're both basically Superman parodies. Uh, but I guess the more the merrier when it comes to that. There, I'm just J.K. More, I'm Simmons. Just more, I'm just more applauding the fact that they got they got characters from different universes. They the approval, you know, because I mean you got. You got Invincible of uh, Omni Man from from Image, aka Skybound Comics, and then you also get in Homelander from Boom, Boom, no, no Dynamite, I believe Dynamite. Dynamite's the Dynamite, Dynamite's Cold Boom. So my head went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that's that's amazing. That's a, that's that, that's impressive, you know, because you 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 won't see any, you won't see a you won't see a Marvel character sharing screen time with a DC character like that. No, and I also don't think they would have put them in Injustice. <laughs> Something tells me that they those characters, they wouldn't have put it in Injustice. But it looks just as bloody. You know, uh, every punch he throws is full of blood. They're, they're keeping that up with the character. And again, I now that I hear J.K. Simmons in the show voice him, I kind of want that in the live action. And they're not going to be able to give it to me because I don't think J.K. is going to put on the suit, uh, you know. And go Even 10 though rounds the man, I, 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 not, I, he to me has. Have you seen pictures of him training with the Rock? Yes, the man is ripped. But yes, is. it's it's that face that I, I don't think can sell <laughs> sell the age of what Omni Man is supposed to look like. Are you saying you can't work out your face? Is that what you're saying? you need to do more uh, cheek ups? We call we call that de aging. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. What that most they could do, yeah. So I don't I don't see them doing that. So then who do you? Who do you uh, cast to be Omni Man? That's going to capture that voice and also that look, and be able to do the tenderness that comes later on. Be able to do the both the absolute horrific callousness, but you know some moments of ah, maybe there is a guy, good guy in there, right? Kind of stuff, right? You know, guy yeah. flies away crying. <laughs> he flies away, and then oh man, when when Mark when Mark eventually sees him again, that's just such a funny exchange. Oh, it's such a funny exchange that he's all like, "Yeah, yeah, we're good. You know, we could be good. Yeah. I think it'd be I'm good." And uh, here's here's a here's a little present, bouncing baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic. I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers, George. Oh, you know, you know. Listen, 
you know what else ball what else bounces balls and uh it turns out that there's a new dragon ball anime series that's been announced dragon ball daima i hope i'm saying that right which apparently sees the franchise regulars like goku bulma and others return but they become younger versions of themselves uh this surprised fans but it also surprised some of the voice actors who did not know that they would be returning <laughs> For this, uh, the show debuts in late 2024. One could argue there is no anime milked as much as Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's it's insane. I, I'm convinced that... I love it, uh, Joe. I love Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I'm just going to say that. First and foremost, raised on it, played the video games, uh, read some of the manga. Um, but I just, I'm always uh, completely shocked at how much we're, like, we're going to put out a video game and it's going to cover the same five arcs that have, <laughs> have been the same five arcs <laughs> since uh, we watched it. So, yeah. I mean, it's good that you have that opinion and we're able to be <laughs> right. on the opposite sides of the spectrum here. Hopefully speak right, right, to right. Different, different loads of fans because I am quite tired of the milking of Dragon Ball Z. I, I, I am happy that it came back and it gave it mm -hmm. a better continuation than gt did with super with super and even mm -hmm. like i was I, even that i was initially like oh my god why are we bringing this back you know right. but i did like those initial movies and a couple of the initial series but then once we started going into ultra instinct and the and the tournament of the multiversal it's just like oh here we go it's it's it just oh it's not, where are the numbers at now right you know right, I mean? right yeah so and there's oh he's this much more powerful and now he's more powerful and but now this person came out of nowhere and, oh, and he's charging up and he's learning this and oh and everyone's you know, screaming much, oh, 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 you know just everyone's screaming yeah <laughs> everyone's you know in the air and screaming <laughs> ex ex exactly it's just yeah. how much of this can you continue to watch? I get it. If if that's like your thing, cool. This is super exciting news for you. But for me, I just as soon as you were saying this to me, I'm just like, oh, so now Toriyama is just like, I'm gonna do GT the way I wanted to do it, right? You know, yeah, and it's just kid, like kid Goku. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And hey, I hope it's good. I hope it's watchable and people have something to talk about with regards to that. But for me, much like you with The Walking Dead, it's like, yeah, that's great for all of you guys. Yeah. I'm going to watch Invincible Season 2 <laughs> and read some comics. I have a little bit of the Alan Moore uh, to it as well, where it goes like, and if I don't watch it, I have my Dragon Ball. You know, right. I know where right. mine is. Yeah. I can go and get that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know? Actually, not too long ago, I, I watched Dragon Ball Z Kai with my son, and that was a lot yeah. of fun. And that was a lot of fun. But even even my son watching it while watching it, watching Kai and explain to him what that was, he goes, Wait a minute, you watch this in an uncondensed format? And I'm like, Yeah. He he just looked at me with these sad eyes, like, oh my God. I um I had great joy bringing Dragon Ball Z to several soldiers who had never seen it when I was overseas. And we would sit and around and we'd watch it, and we'd also play Budokai. Because we had an emulator on the laptop. Nice. Uh, and so we would sit and watch these episodes, but we had to watch them at like 1.5 <laughs> speed because there's a lot of stalling. There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> and, you know, there's only so much one could take. But similarly, I walked into my sister's house and they were watching Kai. And I'm like, oh, so this happened and this happened. They look at me like, how do you know you weren't sitting here watching this? And I'm like, I've watched it before. <laughs> I know these stories, son. In I was the there when long, they were written. <laughs> in the long format. Yes. And I was trying to explain to them that when I was watching it as a kid, when it was on Toonami, it would go like the beginning of the Saiyan saga, the end of the Saiyan saga, then reboot. Beginning of the Saiyan saga, beginning of the Frieza saga, reboot. The beginning of the Saiyan saga, beginning of the Frieza saga, beginning of the Android saga, reboot. And you'd watch right. it, it just keep going over and over until it caught, caught up to the mangas. They would put a season out at a time, and whenever the season was done, they just take you, your ass right back yeah. yep. to the beginning of the show. So I must have seen the, the uh, Saiyan saga a million freaking times. Yeah. Um, so when I play a game, a new game, a 2023 game, they're like, we're taking you to the Saints. Like, come on, please, for the love of God. 
I know this. I know this. I know the roster is going to be in the game because there's only so many people you can pick. There's only been so many people in Dragon Ball. Uh, so yeah, I I hope this is a gateway for those who aren't full from everything that they've been given. But I, unless something absolutely amazing happens and I'll we'll be the first ones to hear about it. Uh, I'm going to leave that to those who are a bit more passionate about that particular yes. thing than I am. I think that's fair. Fair. Uh, speaking of being deep into things, this is Comic Book Click. I think we should end this by talking about some comic news, a lot of comic news. Um, I will start first and foremost by uh, announcing, as DC did, that they are returning to Elseworlds or they're bringing Elseworlds back. Which I feel like they've been kind of wanting to do. They did like, um, what is it? The dark universe, right? Like they, like the tales from flashpoint or whatever the heck they kept, they kept trying to do, you know, all that Batman stuff, all that Batman nightmare Batman stuff is elseworld stories of other Batman mm-hmm. and other places. It felt like this is something they've been wanting to do for a while. Why do you think it took them so long to get back to the elseworlds of it all? I just think, well, one. <laughs> Who who is at the center of all these Elseworld books? Usually Superman and Batman. Well, it's Batman mostly. I think I think three or four of the six titles that are announced are Batman, so they know. <laughs> hey, as long as it's Batman centric, people are going to buy it. Just give me yeah. good quality. But I think um, they, like you said, I think Warner Brothers and DC are just looking at the numbers and going, okay, what's what's been some of our biggest sellers the last couple of years? Knights of Steel, Deceased, even those those kind of what if type stories uh, uh, that you just mentioned a second ago, those have been big, big hits. And it seems like for the people who don't want to deep dive into the universe, that is DC that constantly gets rebooted and changed up. It's like here, I, j- I just want to see my characters and oh, I get to see them in fun, crazy ways that I'm going to read it and then be done. I don't have to worry yeah. that oh how does this how does action comics affect titans and then affect flash and then affect blue beetle and then oh now with this giant event there this is all for the casual readers the people who are looking for a fun story to pick up eventually and trade you know read on before they go to bed read on a train ride and it, they know i'm not i'm not heavily invested so i think that's that's the big thing with these these stories and and also for the writers. Now that you say it out loud, now that you say it out loud, it's kind of like obvious. Like DC is Elseworlds, Dark Knights of Steel is Elseworlds, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, uh, so they've been they've been teasing it, but yeah, I think uh, they're just coming out right with it. So there's supposed to be a Gotham by Gaslight sequel called The Kryptonian Age, um, when the world learns of the very first Kryptonian, Batman the Barbarian. Uh, a six issue take on Dark Knight, uh, of origin of Batman, but set in a medieval Earth. They're doing more Dark Knights of Steel all winter, which is just a sequel to Dark Knights of Steel, um, where they have a medieval Justice League. They have a Batman Night Fire, which uh, what happens when twin brothers Seth and Clay Man are turned loose in Gotham City? They burn it all down. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> that's happening. And then Green Lantern Dark, uh, a horror fantasy where a new Green Lantern carries an actual lantern and not a ring um, and takes on a uh, post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic earth full of monsters. And they also have a uh, DC versus Vampires World War V thing. Vampires and zombies, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, and that was another one they did too, right? DC, DC versus Vampires. That wasn't as big of a hit as the other ones. But look, deceased, they, right? They as deceased or even Knights of Steel, but right here it is. You know, have vampires. you read Knights of Steel? I've not read it, but based okay. on what I've heard about it, when it does get a nice com- uh, completed edition, I would like to pick it up because I I enjoyed deceased. I've only read the first two volumes, and I want to read the third because I heard it's, it. I enjoyed those first two volumes; it was really good. So, okay. and then I believe Tom Taylor did all of that. I think he's the one that yeah. did Knights of Steel. So it's like okay. No brander to me. It's if you give me a good quality pr- producer like 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 Tom Taylor, and even though I'm not the biggest DC fan, I will give it a shot. I liked uh, Di- Dinah as a Green Lantern. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that totally fit. Um, Miss Minutes, 
is being threatened to show up in, in comics <laughs> moving forward, according to uh, C.B. Sabowski. Um, any issues with that? Any issues with her being a actual comic book character? I haven't seen Loki season two yet. I'm kind of waiting t- for that to build up some steam. Yeah. I didn't mind her in Loki in the Loki season because they they gave just enough of her. To, in my opinion, they didn't overdo it. But what are they going to do with her in a, in a comic book series? But I mean, look how much look how much of those characters have come out of this series. I don't know if you know, but you know the the Gator Loki is yeah. featured in a comic. <laughs> um. You know they've done homages to that show in 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 the comics, so it's people love it. People love it because people love Tom Hiddleston, and I think people really like the idea of having these discussions of ooh, and in, in this universe, this and or what, and this time travel, this. But when you go back and do this, I personally just find it overly confusing and verbose. It can you know, like because because unless you have a clear cut purpose for that character, I don't think she just slots in. And to be honest, we don't even really know what her true purpose is in Loki yet. <laughs> so, so you know, she's only she's barely a character in Loki. Uh, so we'll see that moving forward. But I people um, tend to feel comfortable with what they're familiar with. Like you said, they'll see it in a film, they'll see it in a movie, and then go into the comic store and say, "Hey, you know." So who knows how many covers of whatever she's in is going to sell because she's on the cover and they recognize yeah. her from. No, the I mean. Show. I uh there was that timeless one shot that came out a couple years ago right around the time that Loki season 1 was happening mm-hmm. and one of the regular variant covers not even a not even like a, a an incentive one a regular price cover it flew off the shelves flew off the shelves people didn't even care what cuz t- timeless is has been for the last couple of years Marvel's one shot that kind of says hey look this is this is going to be the direction of the of the Marvel universe for the next year. Mm-hmm. And they put her on the cover of it, even though from what I understand, she, from what I remember that issue, she didn't appear in it at all. It was just more of a, Hey, look, everybody likes Miss minutes <laughs> from the cover, show. So yeah. we're going to put her on the cover and people went nuts. Like I remember having that cover in my hands and my comic guy going, Hey dude, get that cover that everybody wants it. And I go, I don't care about this character. So no, right, it, right. let someone, let someone else buy it. I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, hey, as if they do something with the character, sure. But if it's more or less a cash grab because of the show, not my cup of tea. I can see that. I can see that. Like I said, I did, people just like uh, things that they're familiar with. Sometimes they go to the well way too many times, and it seems like that's what's going on. As uh, DC plans to reprint Batman 428, the issue that killed Jason Todd, but they're printing the version that would have been released had the phone vote gone the other way. Really? Yeah. I thought I saw a headline with that. I, I, I didn't realize they were going to go that route. Interesting. So Jason Todd survives. Yeah. Huh. Now, what I'm wondering is, is he going to just somehow survive the explosion or does Batman actually get there in time to stop the explosion from happening? That's also pretty interesting yeah. because isn't the deal like it ends with him holding him? Is the death confirmed in the next issue? I feel like it's something maybe not completely confirmed in the issue where the explosion happens. Hmm. Um, I just remember him hitting Superman. <laughs> Superman's like, all right, bro. Like. <laughs> Get it all, get all your anger out. You ain't gonna hurt nope. me. Like, do you feel better? He's like, my hand hurts. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> now you're done. Yeah, you're yeah, done. that's what. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. We've talked. We've had conversations about Jason Todd. I'm a fan of his, and I get why you're not. <laughs> um, and, I remember but, even reading. I remember reading that as a kid. I remember in elementary school reading that and celebrating, showing all my buddies, being like, "Yo, look, they killed Jason Todd. This is." fantastic <laughs> and then you know as for as emotional as, as as batman was in the back of his mind all, all he's really crying about is oh, i gotta train another one i gotta go shopping i gotta I train gotta. but thankfully he didn't thankfully he didn't tim drake just shows up like yeah solved it i'm here give me the costume you're a big tim drake guy i'm a big tim drake fan uh because it, it was a different take on the sidekick to me to me you had dick grayson who was like the perfect sidekick the perfect uh parallel not even parallel they're all damn near the same character almost as as bruce mm-hmm. he then is forced to retire then you get but he was such a lovable character and then you get like the the 
the jackass version of Dick Grayson and, and Jason Todd. He was such a jerk that yeah. when he goes away, I'm like, yay. And then you get this whole other character who's who just go, figures it out. Like, okay, uh, Bruce Wayne is Batman. I'm really, really smart. He needs a sidekick. Let, let's just get it done. I, and then like kind of like puts him on front street, right? He's like, yeah, you're Batman. And that was Dick Grayson because Dick Grayson does the triple indie flip. Mm -hmm. you know uh and that's what robin did so right you're batman <laughs> there it is there it is and that's what i really liked about the character it was just he wasn't like the I, it, the guy was going to become a superhero regardless and i dig that i did that he not because not because not because uh somebody adopts him and, and says hey put on these put on these bright colors so i so so i can uh sneak behind criminals while you're distracted <laughs> yes <laughs> I love you that know. line in uh, Lego Batman. He's like, you wear the shiny stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. wear the shiny stuff. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! I love that movie so much. <laughs> yeah, but Tim Drake, Tim Drake, without having needing to, you know, he's not just abandoned and left in the street. He all ends up making the ultimate sacrifice. And you can't talk about ultimate nowadays without talking about what Mr. Jonathan Hickman's over there doing at Marvel. Now, he now is you got me. Now you got is, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is bringing back the Ultimate Universe, starting with Ultimate Spider Man. It's going to be Jonathan Hickman and Marco Chichetto. 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 Uh, are they launching a new Ultimate Spider Man comic uh, in 2024? And that was revealed at uh, New York Comic Con. Uh, we also know that Peach Momoko will be the creative force behind a new Ultimate X-Men series, and there's going to be the first ever Ultimate Black Panther series. I guess before we get into all this new news, how do you feel about the Ultimate Un How did you feel about the Ultimate Universe? What were your favorite titles, would you say? And are you excited about this, this reboot, rebranding, or I guess reintroduction to it? I absolutely loved the Ultimate Universe. Not initially when they first announced it i was one of those fans like what you're gonna redo all this all these classic characters and you're gonna act as if though they showed up in the in the 90s or the 2000s this isn't gonna work and then i picked up the first trade but that came out very quickly i, I remember being able to pick up the first trade of ultimate spider-man while issue seven was on was on uh bookshelves or on, on oh, comic wow. shelves and going, oh, I'll, I'll, fine, I'll try it. I'll pick it up. And I I couldn't put it down. I went home. I, I couldn't put it down. And like the next day I came back, give me issue seven. And I literally have that trade and every issue of Ultimate Spider-Man until Secret Wars in my collection right. to this very day. It, it was just a great universe to be a part of. The Ultimates, I mean, Mark Millar and Brian Hitch what they did for the characters. It's the blueprint of the MCU Avengers. Yes, it is. It's essentially. Uh the Ultimate X-Men were it was such a fresh take on the X-Men. As seen, you know, having Wolverine just be an absolute dick. I think he, that's my blind spot in the Ultimate Universe. I I am slightly familiar with the Ultimates. I read some of Amazing I mean uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. I've read some Ultimate Fantastic Four. Yeah, and then even Ultimate Fantastic Four, the way you know, the whole reason the Ultimate Universe existed was the idea that let's see if everything happens starts to happen now in the MCU. All the while, you don't know what's going to happen. Any of these characters can die. It's not there's there is no more um, protection from the right. Oh, you can't kill this person. You can't kill. It. And what what was nice with the Ultimate Universe character was armor is what they say. Right, character armor. Yes, car there was no character armor as well as even uh, and then when they did die, they weren't coming back. Like these characters were dead. So, yeah. so that was, it was so much fun to be like, oh man, they just killed, you know, at one point, and don't get me wrong, that was in a tough story when they killed, you know, uh, Wolverine and Cyclops and it, Jeff, Jeff Loeb just, uh, just went nuts and just killed so many characters in this one, uh, miniseries. I can't remember the name. Yeah, of it Ultimatum. Right Ultimatum. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, ultimatum. Ultimatum. <laughs> ultimatum. You know where 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 Blob eats the wasp, and then Yellow yeah. Jacket bites the head off the Blob, and then gets himself blown up. It yeah, was, it was uh, just Magneto, so nuts. Magneto does something with the polar magnetic forces, so it causes New York City to flood literally indiscriminately killing a bunch of superheroes like you just see their bodies yeah, floating yeah. in the water they're yeah. like yep, you just yeah, see, yep, they're, they're dead, dead. Uh, Dare, yeah. ultimate daredevil yeah. dead angel dead nightcrawler dead just 
just bodies of just yeah you're you're all dead but even before that they, they, that was that was what they would they would do it was notorious for and then you get near near where when near the end of the ultimate universe Jonathan Hickman comes along and Jonathan Hickman at that point if you if you had read his indie work is uh that you 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 really didn't know him and his indie work was always just just mind boggling uh mind boggling stuff the nightly news and uh red I can't remember the name of it red it was it's a crazy time traveling space story but you mm-hmm. you he, he, he had all these crazy stories so then he comes to the ultimate universe which is where the you know at that time Marvel was great at at near the end of the ultimate universe Marvel would take these indie writers and say here. You know, they even gave Kirkman. Kirkman had a had a run on the Ultimate X Men. Brian K. Vaughn had a run on Ultimate X Men, and they gave is Hickman. It, is it the Red Wing? Sorry, Red interrupt. Wing. Yes, Red Wing. Red Wing. Okay. If you like time travel, read Red Wing, and then you'll see why I don't like time travel. But when, <laughs> it's, ri- when it's written when it's well, done. it really is really nuts, and it makes you go, "Yeah, thank God time travel doesn't exist." Um, <laughs> Sorry, real quick. It just says like this is published in 2011. It says. Uh, Jonathan Hickman is possibly the best new talent of the year. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're about to find out about some you're, stuff, you're, and you're man. about to find out, right? You're about to find out. So he, they give him that, like the end of the Ultimate Universe for the most part. When he he takes over, he writes some Ultimate books. I think he does some Ultimate Fantastic Four uh, miniseries, and he, yeah. I don't remember. I think Bendis technically created the Maker. Which is what if Ultimate Friends Reed Richards goes insane basically and becomes a villain? Which isn't Jeez. too much of a leap. No, it's <laughs> it not. Isn't too much it's of not. A leap it's not. All. It was. It was. I loved it. I loved when they did that. So I think maybe Ben just created him, but then Hickman just ran with the ball to the point where after Secret Wars, the two ultimate characters that survived were the Maker and Miles Morales. Yeah. So now, just recently, the Maker figures out all right you know i want my own playground because playing in the 616 he's, everyone he keeps gets, bothering me <laughs> he's bothering me i'm locked up and even if i break out i figured out that they'll probably find a way to lock me up so what's the best way to deal with the situation let's yeah. recreate my home but in a way that i'll like it so in his in in, in the miniseries that just ended uh ultimate i can't remember the I think it's invasion. ultimate invasion and uh, invasion yes. right ultimate invasion mm-hmm. he cr- recreates a new ultimate universe which is which is what's got me even more excited is, is the fact that it's not just r- resuscitating the old ultimate universe it's this is a new ultimate universe so so even the like people like me who are completely familiar with the ultimate universe i'm i'm not, I'm not getting that I'm, this is a new ultimate universe so seeing all these things you're not going to get the Peter Parker, Ultimate Peter Parker. You're not getting the Ultimate Black Panther that you remember. You're not getting um, the Ultimate Ultimate the Ultimates that you, you had. These are brand new. These are these are all brand new books, and the creative teams on these things sound fantastic. You know, getting uh, Hickman, of course, writing writing. I believe he's writing Ultimates and Spider Man. I know he's definitely writing Spider Man. Well, Ultimates hasn't been confirmed yet. No, they they as the, they come. The, the, yeah, uh, or he's Ultimate writing... Spider-Man, Black Panther, and X-Men. And X-Men, and I thought there was a fourth book. I thought it was four books. It might have been. There might be a fourth book. I'm, I'm, really annoyed, I'm, I'm truly annoyed with my internet connection at the moment. To just <laughs> uh, Let me see what I can find. Recent limited series, Ultimate Invasion, sixty one sixty, uh, Ultimate Spider Man, Ultimate Black Panther. Ah, here we go, here we go. Ultimate Universe, Ultimate Universe which, is which is going to probably highlight the Ultimates themselves. But there's a couple other people on the cover. It looks that's by Jonathan Hickman and Stefano Caselli. Great team. Ultimate Spider Man by Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cicchetto. Black Panther by Brian Hill. Awesome. And Stefano Caselli. Wow, he's mm-hmm. doing double duty. Nice. And Ultimate X-Men by Peach Momoko. She's going to be writing and drawing, which, with I mean, Peach Momoko, her, I give her credit. Her art is very unique. It's, it's, it's more, it's her own take on manga. Manga, right? Yeah. yeah. She has a very, and I like a lot of it. Some of it doesn't hit right for me, but I have no idea about her as a writer. So this should be interesting. This should be interesting. And she's putting, and because of her own Japanese roots, 
she's putting armor, Hisako Ichiki, at the center of it. If you like, okay. if you like the Josh Whedon run on X Men when he wrote Astonishing X Men, he was the one that brought her to the forefront. So I don't remember if she was ever in the Ultimate Universe before. So this should be interesting. I'm I'm very excited for this, and I just hope that they keep it to you know four books. You know, don't don't blow this up. Don't don't turn this into ten ten things because I believe that's what turned off Hickman when he was writing the X Men. He wanted it to be this tight story, and then the Marvel editorial came in and said, "No, nah, we're going to milk the crap out of this," and he left. But they got him to come it, back. They got him to come back for this. In your opinion, what was the failure of the Ultimate Universe, or was there a failure of the Ultimate Universe? Or did it just stop because they eventually created Secret Wars and smashed all the Earths together, or was that already kind of getting a bit tired when that happened? I think, on a whole, it just. It got it got a little tired. As much as I was still enjoying Spider Man, I can see why people were just getting like, okay, we're we're kind of done with this. The Ultimate Universe, it felt like at that time also the grittiness of the Ultimate Universe was permeating into the regular universe. So it felt like, well, why am I reading? They have two now? gritty books at the same time. Right. I can just I can just keep yeah. reading Amazing Spider Man instead of Ultimate Spider Man. Um, I, the I'll I'll tell you this, like the Ultimate. The, oh, the the stories on the Ultimates got really crazy, like too crazy, just silly. Like okay. I don't know if you ever did. You ever, did you ever see where Hulk becomes a vampire and then becomes like takes over? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yes, and he 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 one shots Dracula and becomes you know Lord of the Vampires in one story. Interesting. Yeah, it's like stuff like that happened. You're like, okay, all right, uh, right, mm. uh, and then. Even old, like Ultimate Fantastic Four petered off and didn't really get exciting until Hickman comes along and says, "Let me ride out this maker, this maker stuff." And Ultimate yeah. X Men got really, again, just dark and gritty with how deep they were going with, with um, like they started putting mutants in in in, in tournament camps and just, yeah, yeah, it was just like okay, yeah, all right, all right, I. I dark and gritty and now this is there's a part there's there's a part in the beginning when they do stuff like that that gives it more of a realistic feel it feels like it's ripped from the headlines like it's happening right outside our doors and then there's a part where it starts feeling a bit exploitative like you're just taking the worst things that are happening in the world and putting comic book characters in it (laughs) precisely precisely you know so i can i can i can get both of those sides there yeah it just got depressing I, I, even some of that stuff was well written, but I was as I was writing, reading it, it was just like, all right, now, now I gotta. Have a, hopefully, I'll see the sun and go for a walk <laughs> because this is this is just sad. What's your idea slash advice to not have the same thing happen again with this Ultimate keep, Universe? Keep it keep, at four keep, books. Keep, you said keep keep it small, keep keep it small, keep it simple, uh, and and just don't like, even if this is a limited thing don't don't make this some long train ride that goes into eternity because the ultimate universe went for a long time yeah Uh, the ultimate there was i think ultimate spider-man including when he changed it to miles morales ran for damn near 200 issues ultimate x-men was about 120 issues total close to 15 years i want to say if a yeah ultimate spider-man is close to like to the 2000s right right yeah so just let stories end <laughs> that's always been you've you've always uh been a proponent of that so yes that makes a lot very of sense much, very much so um let, let stories end well the stories are continuing or maybe uh, there is a bit of an end because marvel has confirmed that the current Cohen era of the x-men franchise will be coming to an end next year the epic saga began back in 2009 with house of x and powers of x and soon it would all be done with a new pair of interconnected series called fall of the house of x and rise of the power of x is there a bigger rise and fall of a property <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. Going on? did you say 2009 or you meant to say 2019 2019's House of okay. X, sorry. Whew, because I was like, no way did it start in 2009. But if it did, that's how know. long this middle section has been. <laughs> right. Because right. House House and Powers of X... Kicked the doors I, down. I kicked the doors down. 
month to month, I could not wait to read these issues. Mm-hmm. Though, and and they they just like they did with they're doing with the Ultimate Universe rebooting, with the, what they did with the X Men, it kept it to six titles, and it was mm-hmm. tight. It was these even even I think only one of the titles was weak, and even it was only weak because the other five were that strong. And then once Marvel felt like got their hands on it, we're, oh wow, we got a gold mine on our hands. This middle section of the story, they just milked and milked to the point where I just didn't care. I, I lost yeah. interest, and, I, and a lot of people lost interest. Don't get me wrong; some of it is still maintaining that quality. X Men Red, X Men for the most part, and Immortal X Men, great. But most people, who, even the most uh, big time lovers of this stuff, I say to them, "Well, what's happening in Wolverine? What's happening in X Force? What's happening in whatever miniseries that they're also having going on at the same time?" And they look at me like, "Did I read that?" Or yeah, right. Right. you know, oh yeah, Beast is kind of being crazy, and yeah, Colossus, something, you know. Oh the yeah, I heard about, news, about the Beast stuff. <laughs> the big, yeah, yeah. The biggest news to me that came out was the last Hellfire Gala, which is where I don't know if you heard about that. The the, the red modern wedding day, of it all. <laughs> yeah, the modern day red wedding slash mutant massacre, where Nimrod turns himself into a an asteroid that apparently only kills mutants. That was just an amazing. Um, scene. The most recent. Uh, atrocity that happened to mutants yes uh, <laughs> yeah no, and then and then and then and then the psychological damage he causes when he's like yeah it's bad enough i killed everybody here now i'm going to trick you into sending using these portals to send anybody who survived to their to their demise to their doom yeah yeah you know that was just like wow like okay this is cool this is the, does it, it do it, the arrow thing because it i know they jumped to time is there a thing where you're like oh when is this going to meet in the middle kind of stuff because I remember to, House and Powers of X introducing Nimrod, introducing the Orchids, or that kind of stuff. They were jumping very far ahead in time. Was the idea for them to catch up eventually to? I would imagine. I would imagine that was probably Hickman's idea. But then once he left, I don't know how much of that was still adapted by the stewards of, of the X-Men are now seem to be Jerry Duggan and Kieran Gillen. So I'm not. I have no idea. That that's going to be one of those stories, kind of like the Matthew Vaughn story, where in ten years, you know, Hickman's oh, yeah. going to be like, "This is this was my." They plan. told me and I could do anything. With they told guys, me I could do anything, it? and I was I was originally supposed to make you know Captain America, you know, uh, hang out with Jean Grey, and they were supposed to have the 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 mighty Phoenix Force of America that would <laughs> eventually save the entire universe and some some craziness like that. Who yeah. who knows? Who knows? But it it definitely does feel like that's what based on house and powers of x what he was lining it up to for that and the, for those inevitabilities to come along and who knows we might still be going that way with the, the new fall of x and i'm really just hoping now now fall of x and the books that come around around it are more narrow and going yeah. towards that end result without all of these side quests and and stops along the way like this lat because i mean the first the first chapter you know the, the rise i guess you would call it the rise of the house and and powers of x was so concise it was so precise the, the, it felt like everything had a point to it this middle part it, it the just sword swords it, of x and oh yeah all that swords of x and all the books that they came out from that it, it was it, you you can just look back on it now and go, Marvel's just milking this because they know if they slap an X on it right now, everybody's gonna buy it because they're thinking this is important to this this whole era, this Krokoan era to of the X-Men. And some of it it wasn't. Some of it was just a cash grab or bait nostalgia bait, you know, like the exterminators. You remember that? You remember that mini series? Yeah, you yeah. see that? Yeah. You know, they brought I that back then. <laughs> who who did? Because it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So stuff like that. Something okay, like I so with this all of X though. I'll probably give a chance to. We managed to cover House and Powers on this, and I found it very transformative. Like I was really gunning. My only reason why I didn't continue is because it did spawn so many books, and I, I it really became like that. Uh, you know, paralyzed by choice kind of situation. You know, the, all the choices I became paralyzed. Like I don't know which one of these is supposed to read first, so I'm just gonna put a pin in this, and I will return. Mm-hmm. Uh, once I, someone uh, creates a guide for me, um, leaving the the Marvel, or before I get there, mainstream Marvel universe is gonna have a big crossover in twenty twenty four. The theme, vampires. <laughs> no, I didn't repeat the story I just said with DC doing. 
of Vampire's Elseworlds. Marvel <laughs> is gearing up to do a uh, Vampire's crossover in their mainland universe. Maybe that's their, maybe that's their, uh, you know, that's where they're going to tip their cap. They're like, oh, we're doing it in our mainline universe. You guys are doing it in some Elseworlds book. Wow. Is that the one with Blade? It's going to have to be. I'm assuming this might be because, you know, I've always theorized that some of these uh, things are just very similar to what the Ultimates were, you know, blueprints for what they could possibly do in live action somewhere else down the line. And maybe they don't have a definitive Blade story. So now they have to write one where vampires come out of nowhere and we need Blade's help uh, so that they can eventually make some sort of movie of substance down the line. Um, but yeah, the, all that's been confirmed is a, they're wow. heading towards a big vampire themed crossover. Well, I know, I know Blade right now, I believe is teaming up with his daughter and Miles in his book. Mm -hmm. And I know Jason Aaron had done what I thought was pretty interesting in the pages of Avengers where he had the vampire set up shop at that, that city in Moscow that that went into meltdown chernobyl okay because because they realize they can't be affected by radiation <laughs> they can't be affected by radiation so the, the russian government says yeah you, all, all vampires can have this area as long as they agree mm -hmm. to just stay there and so i it could be i don't know i don't know how much of that story finished in the pages of avengers so if they're picking up that whole idea from there i could see it being interesting except for the fact that like you said it's like oh not only is that va our vampires Apparently they're trying. They're trying to make. They're trying to make it like fetch, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to, make it trying to catch on. Yeah, catch on because I, I feel like uh, are they going to bring back True Blood next? You know. I don't. I don't know. According to this write up, they have been kind of slowly teasing it across several titles. Apparently, Moon Knight fought a bunch of vampires. Doctor Strange had referenced uh, that Doctor Strange once wiped out all the vampires, including Dracula. Um, uh. Yes, it's called Blood Hunt. Is the name of the actual event uh, with Jed McKay. I was about to say Jed McKay. Yeah, because now that I, I am watching Moon Knight, I'm not reading Moon Knight, and yeah, he is the steward on Moon Knight. The recent Doctor Strange stuff. He's writing Avengers right now. So, yeah, and yeah. Pepe Larraz is coming mm -hmm. back. Now that's that's um, a good artist. That's a good artist to have. Yeah, I mean the artist, uh, the art on um, House of X is great. So, uh, so yep vampires uh, and if that if that's enough to make you leave marvel you won't be the only one because former marvel mainstay jason aaron who we were just talking about who just finished up his avengers run is taking over action comics for three whole months and it's going to launch a round robin era of writers on the title he'll be followed by current superman writer joshua williamson for a crossover is this some sort of audition for mr aaron not that, he, not, not that he needs it, but I love Jason Aaron. I've, I, I mean, his run on Thor is to me the best, uh, the best run on Thor. Amazing. Um, not, not, not to say anything against the Simonson run or anything like that, but his, his Thor run was just a major, a major epic. And considering the changes he brought about to the character while still maintaining the character were absolutely amazing. I mean, he brought about, you know, the Jane Foster Thor. The, unworthy the unworthy right um as well as you know ending the traditional asgard as we know it while also telling this future story with king thor and yep. just the epic battles between him and gore yeah you know so doing all that stuff just a fantastic run and besides that jason aaron writes he's one of my favorite writers uh, between his scalped between a southern what the hell was the name of that? There was a, it was a, I can't remember the name. Ah, that's terrible. It sounds like I'm not, I don't believe in it, but <laughs> no, no, you know, you just, he, he, he Southern Bastards. It. Southern Bastards. There you go. <laughs> Southern <laughs> Bastards. Yeah. Southern Bastards. Like I said, scalped his run on Thor. I enjoyed his Avengers run. The stuff he's done on Wolverine, just great stuff. So in a character like Superman that I rarely, rarely read, to see Jason Aaron next to Superman makes me go. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably pick up those issues, just because yeah. of Jason Aaron's name is on them. Um, yeah, I like, I, I loved that Thor run. I could see him doing great stuff for the Man of Steel. 
as somebody who's been reading DC for a while, I don't pretend to know exactly what goes on over there, but they seem to have a habit of trying out writers and then giving that one writer every book that they have <laughs> or multiple books that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a feeling that they, they're looking for another. There was, there was a time when they thought Tom King was going to take him to the moon. Then we have Bendis is coming. Remember that? Bendis is coming, you know, yep. and, and that so I can see nowhere. them. I can see them trying to figure out. I just hope he gets a book he's passionate about. If if it's not this, maybe he's a huge Superman fan, you know, because um, I do think when he has something that he's passionate about, he's able to, like you said, extend the lore, but without slapping the face of everything that came before. You know, it's almost right. ends up being simultaneously a love letter, but it leaves the character in a better place than kind of when you found it. So. We know that Superman, there are some people who believe that he's not current enough for today. I think with what Aaron was able to do for Thor, because I wasn't a huge, like, I don't think of like, oh, Thor, I'm going to read that book. Because I, I've always thought it was just like flowery Shakespearean stuff. And <laughs> But I absolutely loved the entirety of Jason Aaron's Thor, Mighty Thor, all that stuff. Uh, I loved War of the Realms. You know, like I was like, what a freaking, this is out of control. He's got everybody on this, on the squad. Like they all down. Um, how much, how much, did, how much did that crossover make you hate Thor dark world? A lot. Bat, because you read that and you go, oh, this is Malekith. I want to show people like the Malekith that I, the blood covered, throw your enemies to the dogs, <laughs> Malekith. Oh, slit you know, your throat. Killing, you don't give a slaughtering, damn. slaughtering children. <laughs> Just yeah, like, he gives, oh. he does not care. Um, mm-hmm. And seeing that, that level of ruthlessness, I was like, "There's no way that could be the same person." <laughs> but so you know, tame. neither neither here nor there. It's all about how you handle the character. That's what's right. most important. And turns out that even though John Constantine is dead, uh, or technically dead, he's getting a new series from mm-hmm. C. Spurrier. Si, and si, Aaron Spur- Campbell. Size si, si Spurrier. Si Spurrier. And uh, Aaron Campbell. Uh, so he's returning to DC in 2024. Hellblazer. Nice. I mean, John Constantine is, is a great character. I. It feels like DC knows they have a great character on their hands the last bunch of years. They've given him a show. They give, they've given him guest spots here and there. He's had series after series. But it's a tough thing to market, it feels. Yeah. Because how do you one, he's he's not a a, a traditional likable character, you know, yeah. and he's not as tra- he's not as whimsically charming as say a Deadpool, who you can say, Well, he's not a good guy, but at least he'll make you laugh in a in a in a silly way. Hey, he makes yeah. He makes you laugh more in like a Dr. House kind of way. Like in a oh, dry, dry, humor. dry. And we're, we're idiots and he's super smart and he's 20 steps ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. All the while, all the while being victorious in his battles because he's doing something underhanded and malicious and, you know, you know, partially selling his soul and doing all types of rituals. So I can see how that turns off a lot of people, but it's still well-written stuff. So I'm, I'm hoping it sticks and Cy Spurrier is a, classic creator who is really the last i'm gonna say like five years or so is on a resurgence there he's been doing lots and lots of stuff and most of it is getting some pretty good acclaim so i'm hoping i'm hoping this sticks yeah this will be called john constantine hellblazer dead in america Hmm. and it's launching launching january 16th um yeah i've always wondered if they're chasing the golden years of that title uh sometimes you know the early like when sandman was coming out and all that stuff was like when vertigo was really taking off right um and i i like the co- the character of constantine even joanna constantine just showed up in in the sandman the television right. series you know so they are trying to get people to know this character more i always thought he was a fun character but right. like you said he's not gonna have the th- he's gonna have the big flashy third act but he's not going to be in the mech suit shooting lasers right. or you know he's going to trick the devil into kicking his own ass or something right. like that and right. then run out of the room before he gets caught or something it's like, like good boy, mate. yeah yeah uh he barely ever triumphantly wins it's a constant battle against evil and how do you tell that in an entertaining 
sort of way. But there are there's room for things like Buffy. There's room for things like Supernatural. You would think that there would be more st- room for constantly try to. I, I guess I, I think the big thing is that people just said <laughs> you kind of finished reading a Constantine book, going this guy sucks, but he won. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Barely, barely yeah. to survive the next to get to the next right. issue. <laughs> right, like he's stitching himself up while smoking a cigarette, and just being like these sons of bitches. They're they're all idiots, you know. You know, it's, as much as for, for for me or even for you or the people that like that character, that kind of a book just is not going to. It's not going to sell a million copies, or so I think that's just the, the thing. When it was a when it was a Vertigo book, you know, you kind of the, the imprint. They knew, okay, this is rated M for mature. We expect this much, but as long as they publish it now as a as a rated T book under the main universe DC headline, I just don't, I don't see it selling like that. Did you ever hear the urban legend that majority of the writers who write for Constantine end up seeing him? <laughs> I've, never Moore, I've, I've never heard that. I've never heard of that. I've said, never heard of that. But as at the moment you finish saying that, I literally felt a chill go down my spine. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not this is not the kind of crap you want to tell me in the middle of October while I'm in my house by myself in the dark. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna uh, go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. And I'm gonna hear somebody spark up a cigarette. Like I heard you were talking shit about me, mate. <laughs> yeah, like I'm seeing in here right now. Like the last line on the Wikipedia. You know, in the early, in the beginning, you know, explanation says some writers who have written his stories have claimed to see him. Um, I'm trying to find out because it's stuff like I think I think more saw him at like a bar. You know, like it's weird. It's weird. Uh, it's weird situations like that. But I always thought it was uh, pretty funny. I can't find any. Oh. Uh, Moore says, one day I was in Westminster in London. This was after we had introduced the character and I was sitting in a sandwich bar. All of a sudden, up the stairs comes John Constantine. He's wearing a trench coat, shortcut, uh, has a shortcut. He looked, no, he didn't even look like Sting. He looked exactly like John Constantine. He looked at me, stared straight in my eyes, smiled, nodded almost conspiratorially, and then just walked off the corner to the other part of the snack bar. I sat there and thought, should I go around the corner and see if he's really there or should I just eat my sandwich and leave? I opted for the latter. I thought it was the safest. I'm not making any claims to anything. I'm just saying that it happened. Strange little story. Alan Moore does tons of drugs. He also prays to like a snake, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he believe, and he believes he's a wizard. So yes, yeah, of course, yes. of course he saw John Constantine. Um, a rumor that persisted uh, for many years claimed that Liverpool occult writer Tom Sel- Selman also served as the model for Constantine. He denies it. Um, Jamie Delano also claims to have encountered Constantine during his run on the character outside the British Museum. Peter Milligan saw Constantine at a party in 2009 and rushed after him only to find out that he disappeared. Brian Azzarello once saw him in the Chicago bar, but avoided him saying the thing about John is the last thing you'd want to be is his friend. <laughs> there you go. There you I, just go. Think all that, I just think all that stuff is really funny. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's funny, but that's exactly why people are reluctant to read the, the theory of any books I by him. Like, <laughs> Why do you want to read? Why do you want to read a book by someone that you don't want to be your friend? You know. Yeah, and then he's right there it's, behind you. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there it is. Dun, dun, dun. By the way, I need your soul. Excuse me. <laughs> I always dug the look of the man. I've always dug the man's image. Speaking of image, we got two big stories uh, before we get out of here. One is the idea that image is creating an imprint called Giant Generator in which it has signed 12 former Marvel and DC creators to exclusive contracts to create their own properties that they will own. Uh, what do you think about this? No, I'm, I'm, I think it's great. I mean, Image, uh, you guys heard me on the channel before. Image is the the stop to, for wonderfully unique content, these titles that cover things that just the big two – aren't and the last couple of years jeff johns and gary frank have have started these as far as i know i th- think they're renaming it like you said the giant what is it the giant generator universe um they are doing ghost machine 
Ghost Machine, right? Yeah, that's, that's Brian Hitch, Fabic, Jason Fabic, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Peter J. Tomasi, Francis Manipool, Gary Frank, uh, Lamont McGee, Brad Meltzer, Jeff Johns. Um, yeah. And then right. they, on the other side, they have Giant Generator where they've roped in people like Daniel Acuna, Andre Lima. I can't do all these names, <laughs> but a lot of very talented, <laughs> a lot of very talented Marvel and DC writers. Um, you, you were saying like the image is the place to be. And now more than ever, image creators are seeing their stuff fleshed out all the way in the same way that the big two would flesh stuff out. In this revolving door of limitless content, you got to believe, um, you know, a lot of these people could quite possibly be the next Robert Kirkman, who ends up show running a show entirely based on their successful um, creator owned comic. You can't beat that. I, or you could be, you know, like Jim Starling, who can't get an invite to Avengers infinity war <laughs> you know like the absolute uh yeah the gall. absolute disrespect the gall the audacity do you think I um you. i got you yeah so it's so, um, sorry the uh, the ghost machine is part of the geiger universe the giant generator yes is rick remender's line of books where he's yes. invited a whole bunch of other creators daniel acuna andre lima Arahu, Paul Az- Azaceta, Bengal. Yeah, oh yeah, he's he's got some some talent. They're way coming, better. They're going to be churning out some some great books. Napalm Lullaby, which I think is all that's part a pretty of... badass name. <laughs> that's not like a cool rock band. Napalm Lullaby. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm trying to think: is this all part of the Radiant Black universe of his, or is this something totally? No, I'm sorry, Kyle Higgins. I think it. I think it's radiant. different Kyle because Higgins it's saying that Remender stuff. sound signed exclusively last month. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is totally brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Wow. This is this sounds great. I'm I I missed this because this sounded when I seen it initially. It sounded like the Geiger universe that Jeff Johns is doing. What like I said with Gary Frank, where he mm-hmm. started his universe is what if during the Cold War the atom bombs were actually dropped and Mm -hmm. the entire world is this post-apocalyptic landscape, but it's, it, it still feels like you can live in it. Yeah. It's, it doesn't, it's not like, Oh my God, the world is ending. It's just, the world is this new way. And you know, the, you have this one hero called Geiger who is able to summon radioactive abilities when he uses these two sticks. It mm-hmm. sound doesn't sound quite. A, I'm not quite capturing, it, but, <laughs> it, but right, just right. know that it's Jeff Johns and it's Gary Frank. It's a great, it's a great series. They then went on to, um, trying to remember the name of the next series. It was about the robot. I can't remember Joe, Robot Joe. It's just this is not Robot good. Joe. It's not Ooh, Jeff Johns. Yeah, it was. Robot Joe. Junkyard Joe. There you go. Junkyard Joe. Where yeah. He's a he's a a robot that seems to be a cyborg, but he's and he's not in any way a pleasant thing to look at. And he he's using these these titles to build his universe. And it's going to be called the Geigerverse. And the next one that he's got coming out is the Ghost Machine, which is this time traveling. I believe I I, I think he's a red coat actually who time travels through and he's you know he's from the revolutionary war and he's time traveling through the geiger universe so it, it, jeff jeff had and it there i believe there are like five or six other books that have been announced that are going to be part oh, yeah, of I'm, this seeing universe. The, I'm seeing this red coat and his mutton chops there you go there you go <laughs> so yeah that that universe has been great what jeff what jeff is building there and now i see what rick remender is building this is this is going to be a lot of fun. And again, image is showing itself to be the, the center for creativity. So if you guys want to read, read stories that, that bring to light new ideas in, and, or even familiar ideas and take it down different, different uh, avenues with beautiful art. And what my favorite thing is real, uh, how do you say like 
stuff that matters that like these like this story is going to finish so some of these characters aren't going to make it you got to be reading because the story is going to finish it has to serve as something else other than a peek into the universe Mm -hmm. exactly right now any marvel title can be sold off of the shelf being just a peek into the universe look it in here's an adventure whatever these these uh other series that are finite have to say something they're like a movie you're, you're being made to say something and then have an end. So that's an interesting thing. And you hear all the time people's problems with editorial as they continue to whether it's reboot the entire universe like Marvel and DC, try to lean more towards synergy, making people, you know, have to change characters because they've seemingly changed it in one episode of one show that's taking place somewhere else and it's popular. It has to be um, refreshing. And I don't blame Gary Frank. I remember all that BS they gave him for Doomsday Clock. <laughs> they were rushing his ass. <laughs> He's a great artist. <laughs> he was probably Fantastic like, you know artist. what, man? Fantastic Forget this. <laughs> I'm over this. Forget this. Um, so, yeah, man, the possibilities are endless with that blank slate. And I love that they, these creators are giving other creators a leg up. Um, it's, it's only going to serve for as another golden era, hopefully. For comics at least when it comes to the creative nature of what you can do with these stories because um i've seen some of the image stuff we've covered some of the image stuff and it really has been groundbreaking as a um in terms of direction in terms of emotion in terms of like you said subject matter on occasions um so really really super excited for that that's all the news that i have do you have anything on your plate that you'd like to talk about well, first, I would like to highlight what Kirkman is doing with his imprint. Um, I don't know if you've okay. talked about this before. This is still on Image. Yeah. Yes. This okay. Is, uh, yeah, he he has a book called Void Rivals, which is using to build up what's called the Energon Universe. Yes. Yes. We spoke and, about this. Yeah. And the idea that there is, if you if you if you know what Energon is, is that he's using it to build up basically the Hasbro Universe, using the Transformers and GI Joe underneath the umbrella of a uh, this bigger story in void rivals about these these two alien races that have been warring against each other for for thousands of years but is what it seems and it's the backdrop is it seems to be happening where the transformers are and the transform they all these characters from the transformers universe are slowly showing up the gi joe characters are somehow going to also eke, eke their way into this universe and it feels very organic it's not forced so and now the trans transformers series just started and that's being written and drawn uh, written and drawn by daniel warren johnson who if you're a wrestling fan and if you just like kinetic art and fun straight in your face stories you gotta you gotta pick up the new transformer series as well as void rivals so you can kind of see where everything's going and the gi joe series the gi joe series is, is not too far behind Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So there I'm, are reasons to live past tomorrow. Look yes, and I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, wait, I'm, I got some more nostalgia trip for you. I got some, some more nostalgia trip for you. For those of you who do love just going down that memory lane, Dynamite has earned, oh, has yes. bought the rights to Thundercats, Gotcha mm-hmm. Man, Powerpuff Flash Girls, Gordon, huh? Is it Powerpuff Girls too? And Powerpuff Girls. As, <laughs> yeah. as as well as a couple others of the Flintstones, Pop of so, Girls popped me because I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, let's, no, no. So let's I mean, we, if 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 you if you're interested in just looking at, hey, bring it in some way, shape, or form, bring it back to Thundercats and all those classic characters that really have haven't been showcased in, in quite some time. Pick up these new Dynamite books that are going to be coming out uh, early next year, I, I believe, in January and February. Yeah, we got a Thundercat Thundercats book come out coming out. Like I said, Gotcha Man, or as is more affectionately known in America as G Force. We got Johnny Quest, Space Ghost, Powerpuff Girls, Flintstones, uh, Wizard of Oz. So a lot of Hanna Barbera stuff. A lot of Hanna Barbera stuff, correct. So and it's a lot of it is already being featured. If you want to check out, uh, if you want to do a quick search for what what's being done, yeah, interesting. So, yeah, Matt. Oh, I'm sorry. Mad Caves, Mad Cave Studios has Gotcha Man and Flash Gordon. Dynamite okay. has Thundercats. Are you getting well some as... new The Phantom? Is that what's coming up next? <laughs> Are we doing The Phantom next? Maybe. 
maybe <laughs> it's, it's, he's he is due he's due for a revival you know yeah. um there's 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 tons of stuff coming out on nycc guys if you want to want us to read some comics and try some new stuff it's there, all there. There it is. There, it's all there, especially for those of you who are experiencing that fatigue and you want to deep dive into something a little bit more personal and something that's going to just speak to you on a new level and maybe even give you a heads up on what's to come because eventually all this stuff is going to be adapted. So if you want yes. to be able to say that you were there when, then get yeah. on it. Get ahead of the curve. And like we said, you know, whether it's um, something completely, you know, fresh or something tried and true, you know, what, what is it? Old, something old, something new. And I guess with Superman, something blue. Go ahead and try <laughs> out. Go ahead. And, and, and there's a buffet out there. I've always said this with comics. You don't have to eat everything. But if there's one dish you like, you can eat as much of that as you, as you want. Uh, yeah, you so can. find find what uh, really... It really sits well with you and we'll continue to cover good bad and different because i love this adventure of comics that we're on and we're definitely going to tackle more indie comics in the future i'm very excited for what some of these um writers are going to be doing on some creator owned stuff but yeah i love uh, covering all this news and this is the kind of episode where we revisit in a year and see how much of this stuff took off how much of this stuff faltered you know how much of this stuff quietly went away without anyone <laughs> without anyone speaking about it. I'm looking at you, vampires. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want stare into the how... sun, please. Stare yes. into the sun. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um, but also, also, guys. Yeah, once these stuff, once these things come out, uh, let us know what you like, so we know what to cover. Yes, yes, because we will be looking to continue this journey that we're on. We are down. 300 episodes this is the 301st had a cool little celebration last uh week our batteries are recharged major issues is on a brand new night we are now taking over thursday nights or coming out thursday i guess it comes out any day i mean any time of day but uh make sure that you're following us wherever we are and the easiest way to follow the major issues podcast is at comicbookclick.com it's the one stop for every episode of the major issues podcast every all 300 which is about 600 hours worth of content and that's like the conservative math on that that's if every episode stopped at two hours and that's barely the case we love what we do here we do it free of charge um so if you want to help support if you go to comicbookclick.com you can hit that support cbc link it will take you to our patreon uh patreon.com slash cbc clubhouse and for little as little as 10 cents a day three dollars a month you can help us keep our lights on here and uh help us afford the hardware and the software that we need to go into the future and i'm honest about this uh b roke has just also invested into some hardware that is hopefully going to take us into the future we're doing a lot of changes behind the scenes but only to improve the product that you guys already got the product that you guys already want and uh just grow the click, grow the family, and keep continuing to talk about stuff like this. And if you want to join the conversation, make sure you hit us up all over social media, facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, use the hashtag comic book click to talk about the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. We're at Major Issue CBC on Twitter. We're also at Major Issue CBC on Twitch. I might be twitching some Spider-Man 2 this weekend. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Can't Very believe nice. that drops, bro. So much, so much, so much. But um, yeah, make sure that you're checking us out there. Uh, if you want to wear a piece of merchandise designed by moi, you can go to our T Public store, which you can also find at comicbookclick.com. But the one thing that is free of charge that you can do to help us grow as a podcast is rate and review us on iTunes. It's the quickest way for us to figure out what you guys like and what you don't. Because I've been to the future where this does become the best podcast to talk about the latest and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. But I can't tell you how we do it because it'll mess up the timeline. And next thing you know, Dwayne Johnson's playing Mark Grayson and nobody wants any of that to happen. He'll find a way to play Mark Grayson and Omni Man some way, somehow. <laughs> Yes, you will. And no, nobody wants any of that to happen. So join the bandwagon before the bandwagon becomes full. We're not stopping anytime soon. We're just tweaking and, uh, you know, tightening some screws here. But the next evolution of not only Comic Book Click, but the Major Issues podcast is impending. So just like those comics, get in before everybody else does because you'll be able to say, I was there. But my name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don. 
And I am Alex, a.k.a. B. Roke, but not broken. And this has been our hot news and even hotter takes episode of the Major Issues Podcast. And remember, whether you're a Transformer, a GoBot, one of the Power Rangers, whether you read comics, like to listen to podcasts, or all about just the latest and greatest to come to TV and film, remember that you're always part of the clique. And always remember that you, yes, you, are worthy. 